these weeds are amazing. They are a bit like us in a way. If you know you've had a life where you've had a lot of challenges and you've had to dig deep inside yourself to find the resources to support yourself and to survive, well you know that you come out being a wiser person. Well these plants are a bit like that. Some of them put their roots down really deep so they can survive and then they bring up nutrients and when they die they provide those for the plants that they grow around, especially things like comfrey and dandelion and dock. They're all deep rooting uh, plants that can mine minerals way down in the lower layers. So, um, but, and then the others, are, a lot of them are pioneer plants so they grow where we expose the soil. That's what they're all about, is covering it up again. So even though people don't think weeds have no value, they all have a role in looking after the earth. Of course they want to grow, but their secondary role is to cover up when we expose the earth. Because nature doesn't like a vacuum and nature likes diversity. And like if you look at a, a piece of weeds in your, you know, it's a patch of your garden if you let it go to weeds, how many varieties are in one little square patch? They all contribute, they all work together. And what we see on the top is one thing, but then there's all underneath the soil, which I'm learning more about, all the microorganisms that are needed, because it's, those microorganisms are how minerals get into plants. They have to, they have an, it's an intermediary, so it doesn't just soil and then plants, they, there has to be a way that those minerals get into the plants, and that's what I'm finding so interesting. So it's what, we need more microorganisms. And that's not only in the soil, it's also in our bodies as well, but we'll get to that now. <laughs> can you tell if you can hear it all right over there? Yeah, it's all good. Oh, cool. Um, so yeah, these are pioneer plants, mostly, and they often accumulate um, nutrients. They have all sorts of nutrients that we normally don't think of in weeds. Like just for example, chickweed that's full of calcium. This is growing abundantly now because it likes the cooler weather, the moist, cool weather, and so this is really lush at the moment. And you can tell it's because it just looks so healthy and lush. And I showed them last night how you can tell chickweed is really chickweed as you snap the stem, and inside there's a rubber band, a stretchy rubber band. I mean, how cool is that? So. Um, Chickens like this, but we can eat it as well. It tastes a little bit like grass. It doesn't have much flavor, but it's crunchy. You can chop it up and put it in your salad. You can put it in your smoothie, and it's not bitter or not bitter like dandelion or sour like sorrel. You know, it's really quite inoffensive. You can pass it around and try a leaf if you want. Like be daring. You can pass it around. It has a beautiful little white flower and, and its Latin name is Stellaria which means little star so just pass around. Try snapping the stem and um, we're going to be having some of that in our smoothie. It's a very... Do you guys want some back there? Just pass it this is a, a, it's a so, sorry, soothing, cooling plant for you know all sorts of conditions. Yeah, that's all right. And then we have um, something like dandelion. You know, everybody's familiar with seeing dandelion in the in the lawn. That one stalk with a big golden flower on it. Now this is a very bitter plant and it's deep rooting, but it's a fantastic tonic for your liver and your kidneys. That's what bitters do, they're good for digestion and they're good for uh, your liver and your, and your kidneys. And it's also a diuretic, so it can make you pee. But the, <laughs> the, um, the root, you can dig it up like in the autumn, like just past now or even now, because they die, the leaves sort of become less in the winter, they go more into the, their energy goes into the roots. So you can dig it up, chop it up and dry it and then roast it and grind it and make a really nice drink out of it. Have you had dandelion coffee? Yeah, that's a brand called Tachino. It's extreme, yeah well that's one brand. But one brand? 
I mean, when you buy it, it's really expensive, but it's so easy to make yourself. But you know, in the Second World War, that's what they, I mean, it's hardly a coffee substitute because it doesn't have caffeine, but that's what they had in, instead of coffee during the war. But it really tastes like coffee, eh? Really, it does. Really, really it's got an amazing aroma. I should have bought them in glass. I forgot to bring the roots. What do the roots look like? Actually? They're brown and they're, they can be really long. Like a yeah, a long, deep tap root. Quite can be that fat sometimes. If you let them get two or three years old, they'll get to be quite huge plants. I had some that were like that. Um, and then it's worthwhile digging up. Otherwise, they're kind of little tiny things and they dry up and there's not much left. So we also have, um, at this time of the year, you have this plant growing, cleavers, which is quite a, it's a yeah, it's, it's called sticky willow, it's also called bed straw, you know, the, in the past they used to use plants like this on the floor to spread on the floor, and this is actually called bed straw, so because it's quite um, a fibrous plant, it's got structure, it's full of silica. And we need that for our nails and our um, hair and things. So this is really great to, to eat and put in your smoothie. It's also in the coffee family, actually in the coffee family. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll try making coffee out of the little sticky seeds that, you know, that get on your clothes or on your cat's fur or whatever. They are impossible to crack and grind for one thing and they taste horrible for another. <laughs> <laughs> So don't try that, That's, I don't recommend it. But um, this is also a coagulating plant. You can use it to make um, cheese, coagulates milk. And its Latin name, its Greek name, gallium, means milk. So how amazing is that? In, in England, they, Cheshire cheese has been made with this as a coagulant. And someone last night said they were going to use plantain to make some cheese as well. So it's quite extraordinary. Then we have um, plantain. You, any of you know plantain? This one with the narrow ribs. This is, there's three kinds. There's a round leaf one. Then there's one that's got kind of a jagged leaf that's called buck's horn. Now this is an extraordinary plant. It's tough as, and you can see it can get holes in it and it doesn't get damaged. And um, in fact, it's, it's a wound plant for us. It helps draw cells together, so it will heal wounds and it can be used to take the sting out of an, uh, a, a mosquito sting. I rubbed it on my mosquito bite and it went away really quickly. And that's what I put in, my, in, the, in there, yeah. I infused this in oil and then I... And what's Kumaro? Kumaro is a native plant that's also a really good skin plant. Yeah, so plantain, I have, uh, this is what I think one of my favourites now because it has <coughs> such a history, like it goes back thousands of years, they've been using it for thousands of years and there's all kinds of charms and uh, superstitions that they used to live by in the Middle Ages but there's one that I think is so cute which is on the summer solstice you gather the the seed heads of this, you know, they look like little mini bulrushes and they have little anthers hanging out the sides. And so you pick three of these and then you take those little anther things off and you wrap it up in a dock leaf and you put it under a stone overnight. And this is to find out if you're going to find true love, you see. It has to be on the shortest day in the summer. And then in the morning, if the little ants, some more little ants have stood up, you are assured of true love. <laughs> <laughs> I think things like that are so cute. I mean, these plants have been known about and t written about since, you know, Shakespeare. He mentions weeds over a hundred times in his plays. I mean, they, they knew all about those pl these plants then. And if you'd gone to the pharmacy around 1900s, early 1920s, you still would have got a, a bottle of plant mixture for your ills. You, you wouldn't have been given drugs because there weren't any. So, you know, we just lost this knowledge and, and there seems to be a hunger for it again now. So I'm, it's really great that people are interested in what's just growing around them. And that's how we reconnect with nature and um, feel grounded in our surroundings and connected. Can you give us some stats on the nutritional quality? Yes. Of the 
Exactly. I've got general ones, but do um, you want individual or general? Yeah, that was my fact sheet. So weeds, they have lots of things like enzymes, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and they even have protein, heaps and heaps of protein. For example, in um, 100 grams of beetroot, there is 1.61 grams of protein, but in the tops of beetroot, which are these, you know, these lovely red veined leaves that come off beetroots, which you normally chuck out, or else you don't see them in the grocery shop because they don't sell the leaves. In one, 100 grams of those, there is 2.2 grams of protein, and in 100 grams of kale, there's 3.3 .3 grams of protein. So we never really think uh, green leaves are a source of protein, but if you think about it, that's all that animals like chimpanzees, gorillas, elephants, they only eat leaves, and so they are getting, and cows only eat grass. So they get all their protein and calcium just from, from grass. But um, cows, you know, they have four stomachs and they chew their cud. They chew the same grass, I think, 200 times and they ferment it. So as I said, we're getting to the fermenting bit because this is where I'm getting all my inspiration for fermenting weeds is the fact that a cow's stomach ferments greens to get out more nutrition. So I figure that's one, another way to get them out of weeds. So, um, but weeds also have antioxidants, so that's against free radicals. Um, they have tons of chlorophyll, which as you know, chlorophyll is the, the green energy that's from the sun, the, how photosynthesis happens. And then the other fact that I think is so cool that the sap running in plants and our blood are not that dissimilar. There was one major thing different, well of course we're not plants, but plants have magnesium, the mineral ma magnesium, and we have iron. But otherwise, those two liquids are very similar, which I think is incredible. Um, so they, they, having a lot of green leaves in our smoothies helps balance the pH in our body, cleanse our inner organs, and it boosts our immune system because you're getting a shot of nutrition. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, and they cost nothing to grow. They, you don't have to water them or tend to them in any way, they'll grow no matter what. They'll find their place that they like and you just have to take the time to know which ones to eat and, and take the to, you know, have the time to do it because some people complain that they haven't got time to go in the morning and pick their green smoothies but you can do it the night before because I don't know if Kim's talked about this but a smoothie will last longer in the fridge than say just a juice that oxidizes a lot quicker because there's no fiber in there to stop the oxidation. And that's another thing they have is lots of fiber. Um, so, you know, they're really, when you put them together in a smoothie with fruit, these weeds are a super food.